Reader. Viewer. All right. So enjoy the play. When darkness has fallen, the world around me is still, I suddenly feel an intense burst of emotion. Maybe anger. In a flash, I despise everyone. My clen clenched fists tremble. I focus my attention on people's pitiful flaws. Immaturity, laziness, greed, ignorance, arrogance. Be worthlessness. In a flash, I'm overcome by a sense of doom. I relive, I relive my mistakes vividly, wishing I could erase them from history, or wishing, at very least, that I could just forget them. Maybe envy, maybe loneliness, maybe fear, maybe distrust, maybe betrayal, maybe hate, maybe awe. Somewhere amongst the burst of negative feelings, there is an oasis of wonder, a moment when the brilliant complexity of the physical world transcends my petty human flaws. When the mathematical logic of the universe unravels like a red carpet in my face. You see, I take great uh, comfort in the fact that everything has a rational explanation. You know why? I know why seasons change, why snowflakes fall in the winter, why ice has greater volume than water, why rainbows form in spring, and I know that my genetic predisposition to die can be rationally explained by evolution. Believing that everything can be justified means having the hope of understanding anything. It means that one day there will be cures to presently incurable diseases, tools to live on Earth without disturbing its fragile ecosystems, and fantastic explanations for the wonder and beauty of our awesome universe. Everything is explainable. Rational, understandable, mathematical, logical, logical. Rational explanations can be a curse too. Physical phenomena are wondrous when they can be attributed to parts and interactions, but emotions lose their grandeur when they reveal with nothing more than byproducts of neurochemistry. I remember my freshman year. I had been dating a girl for a while, and I cherished every minute of it. I felt a deep emotional connection. Every time we touched, it was like two celestial bodies meeting after aeons, isolated in space. Everything felt so perfect when I was with her. I was sure we were in love. I was so excited that I told my brother. How do you know when, when we're in love? In love? Yeah, in love. Careful how you use that word. I hate to say this, but you have to remember that you're at the age where you have strong physical desires. Someone may come along who satisfies those desires and fills a need. You may be tempted to call that love, but rushing to that conclusion will disappoint you in the end. Maybe you are in love. But realize that your body is dictating that feeling, not your better judgment. At first, I was really taken aback by what he said. Love felt like love, and I was sure about it. I thought he'd be happy. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that he might be right. Love has a rational explanation. It's categorized by a response pattern in the amygdala meditated by oxytocin, the release of which is triggered by romantic interactions, i.e. gratified lust. The thought that my love, seemingly so pure, could be a manifestation of lust was disturbing, yet scientifically undeniable. I thought back to my intimacy, one body pressed against another. Were they innocent, or did I seek them for arousing? Yes, there was a rational explanation, but sadly, it wasn't the explanation I wanted. Now I have come to envy people who never second-guess their own emotions. Religious fanatics, for example. Why? They live their life in blissful ignorance. But do people like that even exist? I suspect everyone is introspective, to some extent. Of course, there are ignorant people out there. Never underestimate human stupidity. I disagree. I think that each person's inner world is a labyrinth of conflict, an enigma that gains complexity through cognitive dissonance. And what of snap judgments and schemes? I suppose you have a point. Perhaps, but perhaps we have more in common than you think. Before my math coach died, I told myself I was different from everyone else. As an atheist, I came to the academic conclusion that there was no afterlife, and so there was no reason to mourn the dead. I was told that everyone cries when someone they love dies, but I told myself that I wouldn't. I wouldn't cry because I could just accept death's unchangeable, unchangeable nature and move forward. 
I remember the exact words the principal, the vice principal used after he told me about it. He said, we're all going through the same thing. I didn't do anything besides sit there and nod when he told me. I told, I told myself, I retained my composure because I was indifferent. I was completely comfortable with death. I was wrong as hell. Death as a concept meant as much to me as death the work. Dead. Gone. Away. Never. Strings of letters and syllables, not droplets of water streaming down either cheek. I could put on a show of smiles and laughs in public and maintain my composure. But when I got home, when I was finally alone, I smashed my fist into my bed and buried my head in the pillow. My mind screamed, I miss you, please come back. A desperate voice veiling in all directions, but trapped within a skull. I miss you. I was haunted by the words he had spoken to me no more than a year earlier when my team had won a competition. He said, you're on to make my decade, kid. How could I have deserved those words? More importantly, how could I go forward knowing that I had not lived up to his words within his lifetime? The teachers that remained tried to emulate his joy, but it was modeled by personal ambition or apathy. I would remember the pure glee that flooded him when my teammates and I succeeded, and I wondered how winning a math competition could ever feel the same without him. I told myself that I wouldn't cry. But I did. I did. I came to realize that we aren't so different after all. You, me, the man sitting on a bench across the street, the woman in the car driving by. We can hide ourselves in bubbles, put on a show of apathy, and differ in a thousand measures of personality. But we all cry when someone we love dies. In at least one small way, we are all the same.